Hello there, I'm Jimmy of Vegas and this is how to make a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 18. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at uh, hurt sounds, so when we get shot we're going to go ow, uh, whatever, uh, we'll flash on the screen red, uh, we'll also look at setting up lives as well for UI and see how far we get. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So we have quite a bit to cover in this tutorial and I'm hoping it doesn't drag on for too long. So I just really want to get into it. So as it stands now, our little soldier here, he is going to fire at us. He's going to try and kill us, whatever. So we need to have some ow sounds happen. So on the script, we're going to have on the soldier AI, it's all going to be down to uh, him basically shooting at us. So if you connect the shot, we are going to say, ow, ooh, ah, whatever. That means we're going to need to add in another variable here. And then uh, we're going to use an array to add in uh, three more variables, which is going to be the hurt sounds. So at the very top, let's add in public int and we'll have gen hurt, so that's short for generate, uh, and that's going to be hurt, so we're going to generate either 0, 1, or 2, which means we're going to have public audio source, and then the square brackets, because it's going to be an array, so that also gives us the opportunity to use 0, 1, or 2 on the same uh, actual variable, and it's going to be hurt sound, semicolon. So what that means is down here, after we've been shot, so we've taken five off ourselves, we are going to say gen hurt equals random dot range, and that allows us to generate a number between a minimum and a maximum value. So we need to say zero and three. Now, although we're going to have zero, one, and two, it is just one of those little quirks of uh, coding. It will never generate that maximum number. So if you have five hurt sounds, your maximum number would indeed be five, but you'd only generate one, two, three, four. Okay, so put one above whatever your maximum would be. So we want zero, one, or two, so we put three. Close bracket, semicolon, and then we need to say if gen hurt equals one, then do the following, and that's going to be hurt sound and in the square brackets, we put gen hurt. So it's going to define element zero at this point. If it generates zero, it's going to define element one. If it generates one and so on. Dot play. Oh, close bracket, semicolon. And next, what we need to do is basically, actually, do you know what? Now I think about it. I don't even think we need that if statement, do we? Because we're using an array here. So we don't actually need to use an if statement. By Joe, Jimmy, you've just resolved it. <laughs> so when I tested this out, I, I, I was doing it in a hurry and I just I didn't bother with an array. So I just, it's kind of glossed over it. But yeah, we don't need an array, do we? Of course not, because we're generating the number and then we're playing the number right there. So let's save that script there. So it's just an extra two lines of code and extra two variables. So that means we're going to have to bring in three audio sounds. So let's go to our FPS controller. Let's go to audio, let's go to effects, and let's add in here a new empty game object and call this one hurt01. And we'll duplicate that two more times, call it hurt2 and hurt3, which means we're going to have to bring in some audio. So let's go to audio, go to effects, and I'm going to bring in these three sounds, which is just sounds of me grunting. If you really want to download them, you can. They're on the website in the Downloads NASA section and Wolfenstein clone. So let's add Hurt1 to Hurt1, Hurt2, and Hurt3. And obviously we're going to need to select them and turn off Play on Await because we only want them to play when we've been shot. And it's going to randomize which one we play so we're not hearing the same one over and over and over again. So go to our soldier, and on the enemy AI object, we need to add in these hurt sounds here. So if we click here, hurt sound, change the size to three, you can see element zero, one, and two. 
which means we just need to drag one and two and three. And I'm going to save that now. So we should have the ability to hear different hurt sounds as we play this now. So let's check it out. That's okay. So I want to refine this a little bit more. I'm finding, as I listen to that, it doesn't quite sound right because the sound uh, ah, is happening at the exact same time as the gun. So I want to give it a little bit of a delay, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in here uh, a little extra. So I'm going to say yield and then return new wait for seconds and we'll wait for probably not point let's say two and see how that sounds just because i want a little bit of a delay after we've been shot so fingers crossed this should pan out quite nicely now yep okay i'm happy with that so now let's add in a red flash that we've been hurt it's really, really easy to do, believe it or not, because we can just go to game object, go to UI, and go to raw image. So that raw image is very handy because just like this raw image, we can allow this one to basically be red. So let's change it to red completely. And I am going to anchor it, stretch, so it goes across the screen, and I'm gonna have zero, 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 zero. So it stretches across the entire screen. Might have it a little bit darker red, maybe a crimsony kind of color. And I'm gonna rename it to Hurt Flash. Now, if we press play now, it's going to be completely all over our screen and we won't be able to see anything. And if we flash it up, I don't want it to flash over the UI panel. I always want that UI panel to be on top of everything. So I'm gonna put Hurt Flash above UI panel. And we can see there that the UI panel at the bottom is now visible no matter what. Reason being is the further it is down the canvas list, the more forward it is in the visual. So the hurt flash, I'm going to reduce the alpha to maybe 100-ish. Yeah, that should do. And, and then I'm going to turn it off. Now what I'll do is I will add at the very top that variable. So public game object and let's call this something let's just call it hurt flash i guess and down here where we have uh, that yield wait for seconds that we put in before that i'm going to put hurt flash dot set active true and then after it i'm going to say false now it may stay on screen a little bit longer than i would like but I don't think it matters too much because you can refine this. You don't need to rush through things like I am. I'm showing you the mechanics. You just then need to modify it. Ah, of course, we didn't declare it, did we? So we need to go to enemy AI and then, obviously, <laughs> add it because it's a new variable. So we should not have a problem this time. Okay. Yep, that should do. So you refine that as much as you need to, but that's basically how you do it. I just think it adds a little bit extra to the game. So next on our list of things to do in this tutorial is lives. So lives is going to be fun because this is where we go to our scene from previously, which we had game over and we reset or rather we've got game of what we're going to reset now. So in order to do this, we are going to have something very similar to global health. But first, we need to create that life section. So where we've got the health panel, I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate, and bring it over probably about here, because I think that's roughly where it is, if, if memory serves me right anyway. And let's call this life panel. And in here, we change this to say lives and health value is going to be, in fact, we'll rename this to life, life, not life, life <laughs> label. 
Wow, I can't get my words out today. And this is going to be life value. So by default, that is going to be three, I think. So if we press play now, that should be its own independent object. And it is. So lives three. Okay. So next on the list is to create that script to lose a lot, or rather keep track of lives and then lose a life. So in our scripts, in stats, let's duplicate global health. So hold control, press D on global health. Let's rename global life and let's open that up in a visual studio. Firstly, let's rename global life, not global health. And we can get rid of the scene management because we're not going to be dealing with scene management in this script particularly. So let's go down and change things that we need to do. So game object health display is now going to be life display. Health value is going to be life value and internal health is going to be internal life so void start we are going to say none of that because that's irrelevant to us we don't need to worry about setting the lives however we do need to say the life value by default at the start is going to be three so at this point all we need to do is display right here that the life value on screen that, that's all we need to do we don't need to keep track of anything else here so they can go and we're gonna say internal life equals life value and then life display uh, get component text blank plus life value and then we can get rid of that percentage at the end semicolon and save so this will keep track and display the amount of lives that we actually have. So if we find our health container object, I'm also going to use this for life container. So anything to do with health and life and all stuff like that is going to be contained on this one object. So let's add global life over here and life display is going to be life value right there. So even if we change life value back to zero, when we start the game, it will change it to three. That's all good and well. So the next sequence that we have to arrange here, I'm going to save that scene, is to go to uh, the script which basically recycles us in the other scene. So let's head to that other scene. So let's go to our scenes folder and level recycle. So what we need to do here is basically add a script which brings us back into the game but with one less life so let's go back to our scripts folder and we should probably do this in stats so i'm going to right click c sharp script recycle level so in this script what we're going to do is we are firstly going to say we don't need voice start we don't need that at all uh, sorry void update we do need voice start we don't need update in void start, we are going to say global life dot life value minus equals one semicolon. And at the top, we're going to say using unity engine dot UI semicolon. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to say scene manager dot in fact i've just realized it's not ui is it it's scene management obviously because we're changing scene dot load scene and in brackets it's going to be whatever level it was so let's check that in the build settings and it is two so two close bracket semicolon so that's all good and well however at this point it's going to keep recycling us round and round and we'll end up in negative lives so in order to change that we need to add in a little bit more here we need to say public game object and we'll have game over semicolon and on that note right there let's turn off that game over text so it's only ever going to be a black screen until we have game over so back on the script 
we'll say void start and then global life dot life value minus equals one and we'll say if global life dot life value equals zero then do the following and that is going to be game over not game object game over dot set active true semicolon and then else open curly bracket and then inside that we have c manager load scene and then close curly bracket and save so basically what this script is doing is saying when it loads up we take away a life we check if that life is zero and if it isn't we reload the scene if it is then it's game over so let's add that script to our uh, recycle level uh, so game object create empty and we'll have this as controls so recycle level drag and drop and game over is that text so i'm gonna save that scene head back to our original scene and i'm gonna press play now this may take a couple of minutes because we are going to basically get game over so it may take just a, a couple of minutes here we're getting there we're getting there so far so good i should really speed up the uh shooting thing shouldn't i and we should go to our other scene there we go so we've respawned with two lives now so while this is now playing out i'm going to tell you what we're going to do in the next tutorial so next time we are going to be able to actually kill our enemy so we're going to set up the mechanics to be able to shoot him it's getting really annoying already <laughs> so mechanics to shoot him and kill him obviously we're going to deal with his animation when he dies as well so that's going to be fun to do as well i think so this should be the last time now so far so good yeah so this could be it I'm, I'm really hoping this works guys I'm really hoping this works all this effort for nothing ready nearly there one more shot and there we go we have game over we don't recycle the scene to the level again perfect so like i said next guys next time we're going to focus on killing our enemy so until that next tutorial guys thank you very much for watching